Hello, it's Editing Rosie here. I'm at the shop counter. Um, I don't think the audio is very good in this. I don't know what it's like in this clip, but I'm not even trying to use a microphone. Um, well, phew. the setup I used, as I, I say, even in this video, that the microphone is kind of at diaphragm height, which is famously not where mouth sounds come from. Um, so it's a bit mixed. We're living, we're learning, we're laughing, we're loving. Um, but I, I think it's still okay. Just, it's a bit uneven at times. Uh, and I apologize for that. Anyway, here's a video I recorded a month ago that was six weeks after the previous video. Hi. Uh, one of my least favourite things is when YouTubers tell me where they've been and uh, their schedules and why they haven't been uploading. Um, but man, where have I been? Not a view I normally hold, but there are too many bank holidays. And uh, then I was ill, then I was in Disneyland. Um, and so I made three videos and then just made no further videos for six weeks. But here I am. Um, I'm in my basement. Uh, several reasons. One, I always feel a bit weird that um, I'm recording upstairs where technically people could see me from the street on a day when the shop is closed. I spend a lot of time standing very still on the assumption that their vision is based on movement um, and that if I hide at the back, no one will see me uh, when people press their little faces up against the window. Um, secondly, this is the actual intention, uh, is to have this little place as a proper um, setup. So I'm not uh, just in front of some fabric. Um, this is a shrine to me. Um, it's got all the stuff that I made for my book. You will be able to knit by the end of this book. Uh, it's got a yarn bowl that um, my friends painted for me with the shop logo on. It's got a sewing machine um, in the shop colours that I have never used. Uh, it's a little shrine, it's a little shrine to me. Um, it's a really odd setup today. Uh, a <laughs> ancient um, sort of shelving unit uh, It currently has the camera on top and a microphone uh, I would say roughly a diaphragm height. So uh, if I get the hiccups, it's going to be in crystal clear Dolby audio. Um, I'm on a, a chair that spins and creaks. Um, so this is a, <laughs> these are my decorative plugs. This is a work in progress. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been away, got a haircut. Uh, it's now been long enough that I need to get another haircut and I've dyed my hair. Um, but oh, I know what you're actually thinking is, <laughs> Rosie, is that a finished object that you're wearing? Yeah, it is. It is. This is a finished object. This is my basic raglan jumper, my hoagie locatelli um, in the West Yorkshire Spinners BFL Fleece DK in Ecru. And I think we decided it was Ravine. This is a nice teal one. Um, there it is. That's, that's, that's the uh, flattering. Uh, angle and I love it so much um this is the eighth time I have knitted this pattern and this is by far and away the best one because I knitted it in a size that fits me in a style that I like um and I finished it um so we've got a 75 percent completion rate on those projects but yeah have a new fo finished object um I wore it to Disneyland. I wore it to France because I thought if you have a new Breton jumper, where where else to wear it but um, France. Um, I like to travel dressed up. Um, so yes, I was at King's Cross Station or St Pancras at 8.30. Um, full face, red lipstick, freshly washed and blocked jumper. Just the sizing is so, I'm so happy with it. It's got, um, it's not like grossly oversized because you don't want it to kind of 
Like when you're doing oversized, like boxy things, sometimes they look a bit weird around the old armpit because of where they kind of start. Um, but this one works really well. It's uh, it, I nearly stopped this two stripes early, which would have been sixteen rows early. And oh, oh, oh thank goodness I did not do that because um, when I first put it on, I did think it was a wee bit short. And I don't think that anymore. And it, but it would have been tiny. <laughs> it would have been like, you know, a woolly jumper with under boob, which I think is um, a choice. Yes, I finished it at the end of April, going into May, but the basement is very cold, so I'm still able to get some wear out of it. I was thinking the other day that I don't know if I have that many things that I have knitted in the 10 years I've been knitting that I love and super use loads, which is not true when I actually think about it. But um, I feel like I have not made many jumpers uh, that I, I, I mean, I knit a lot of socks. So this is why it's not true. But um, it's so nice to have a jumper that is just, it fits. It's cozy, the yarn is so nice even, even with a wash and this is now it's second wear. Still smells kind of cheapy. So this is obviously finished. Uh, the last couple of videos I've done, I've had two projects, two projects on the go. We've been working on two projects. So this means that one of those two is done. Um, we will take a look now at the other project, uh, which is the, Jetta sweater. Jetta sweater? Jet, I don't know. Um, but it's the uh, pattern for the Kremka. Recycled will reborn. Reborn will recycle. Anyway, um, where have I got to? Boom, a tank top is where I have got to. This is a technically wearable. <laughs> this. God, there is such a part of me that is going, just stop there, just get out while you can. It's slightly at the point in a project where you go, oh man, I hate this. This has been a waste of everyone's time and energy. It will never be wearable. Um, I'll just leave it as a sample. It's not gonna be like that. Oh, I should say, the last time I showed this jumper, I found a drop stitch while I was uh, showing it off in the last video. I. And I jokingly said I was under some kind of stitch dropping curse. I think I might be. Because I t I'd just picked up one of the sleeves and I'd done a couple of inches. And then later on I found another one. And then when I was doing the other sleeve, there was another. Um, and then I, I knitted, I probably knitted the equivalent of three sleeves in this because I was trying to do a thing where I was trying to carry my yarn up the yarn chain, you see here that there's the jog where the stripes change, which is fine because that's on my underarm and also that's how knitting, that's how that works. Um, and I was trying to carry the yarn up so I didn't have loads of ends to weave in and it just looked so much weirder and lumpier than if I had it was just cutting the yarn and weaving it in. So I think in total, I probably knitted the equivalent of three sleeves. Um, because I changed halfway through one and then I changed my mind again halfway through the second. Um, yeah, so, uh, but the, 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 the dr stitches dropping and this weird, like really lumpy, inconsistent, sometimes it would catch in perfectly and oh, it was bad. So I'm glad I got rid of it and I sat and watched an amazing movie called My Old School on iPlayer. Um, uh, where I can sell it to you simply that the subject of the movie didn't want to appear, so Alan Cumming lip syncs all his words. I watched that and I sewed in all the ends and it was great and it's the best. Anyway, back to the Yetta sweater. I like to share this when I'm teaching, the number of mistakes I make, um, because when people are new knitters and I fix things, they go, how do you even see that? And I go, because I have messed up so many times. Not because I'm naturally great at knitting, no, but because I have just messed up 
so many, so many times. Um, so I'd fixed that, I knitted the back, and then um, it was meant to be just seamed shoulders, and I did a three needle bind off instead. I mean, look at that, and then on the inside, and it's just neater and stronger, and anything where I can knit rather than sewing, knitting together is great. And the way it's constructed is you have these two big squares, basically, and then you knit a little bit of shoulder on either side at the top with um, a kind of gap where the neckband goes. And I had done the front entirely, and I did my first shoulder on the back and bound three needle, three needle binded, three needle, did a th three needle bound it off. And then um, just did the neck shoulder and put it on and thought this feels really tight. And it was because I had forgotten to actually knit the extra four rows. So I had for the shoulder on the back on one of them. So I had this sort of hunchback, like my posture is wonky, but it's not that wonky. So I had to rip it out and rip out the three needle bind off, put in those, that's like three or four rows at most of a third of the width, redo it. And then it was kind of a, just a sort of tabard affair. And I tried sewing it up because I had to sew the side seams and it looked bad. And it was just hard to see. It's weird, okay? It's like this long broken moss stitch. I found it really difficult to sew up. So I, I blocked it first, which is a good idea, but especially if you've got everything in pieces, it felt a bit weird to block it halfway through the project. So I washed it, pinned it out nice and flat, did a mattress stitch, which I'm, I mean, you can kind of see the line, but it's pretty neat. There is a s fairly substantial seam inside. And then picked up for the neck band. But because this wool is recycled, the fibers are short because when you're breaking down the garments um, and textiles that's used to make the wool, you obviously don't get the lovely long fibers that you get from uh, virgin fibres. When I was picking up around the neckband, these bits had been cast off and I was trying to pick them up and then I was trying to knit through the back loop, which was a mistake, and some of them broke and we were doing this at meet and make in the shop and I didn't want to, <laughs> in front of everyone, be like, damn, this product that we sell is breaking. It's breaking. Um, so I was just very quietly trying to, yeah, 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 just uh, rip out strands um, and it was absolutely fine because it ended up being neater than it would have been had I done what the pattern asked which was to pick up the cast off edge I took out the cast off edge and just picked up the live stitches from the front and back which often is what things ask you to do anyway they'll put things on stitch holders so it's not like I created some kind of weird workaround it's um yeah, and also if I had not been quite so messy at doing it, some of them I was trying to knit the same quite tight snitch about eight times, so it would obviously just, it just went. And then I uh, knit another neckband, folded it over and sewed it in, um, which took several attempts because I thought, wow, this looks really messy, was folding it the wrong way, so my seam was on the outside. And uh, with that, I have what looks and is wearable as a slip over as the youth say. Um, so I've got, uh, you know, finished front back. Really, I do love a folded neckband. So you knit it double height and fold it in half and you just get this really scrummy edge. Um, I tried it on in front of people to get them to tell me that it was good and I was not bad. And uh, they said it is good and I'm not bad. Um, but we think I need to take out a little bit on the arm side that's your sleeve hole. And then um, like a centimeter or so, just cause it was quite tight um, before I do the sleeves. Uh, and I had to buy knitting needles for it because I didn't have short five millimeter tips for my knit pros, but I do now. So that's my at work project, uh, two sleeves, seems fine and you knit them in the round and then the whole thing just needs blocking but the good thing is all the finishing like the sewing the collar sewing the side seams done 
Oh no, I did a bit with the jumper and now there's fluff everywhere. As a uh, cat owner who knits, fluff everywhere is just my default state. I should convert like a treadmill pad so it just is a constant lint roller that I can just lean myself against every day. I can take off the um, inevitable fluff. So last time we spoke, I went through some projects that would be my next project after I finished this. Um, and I've done none of those, not a one. I, I, I even got out a jumper and was knitting it that was not one of the ones that I talked about, uh, you know, one of the old cast-ons. And that was gonna be my, oh my God, look how much better of a knitter I am now project. Uh, and it's worse now, I've done it worse the second time. So that uh, came out of the, wasn't in the pile, it was in the box. That's how long and ago I had worked on it. I've also learned that because of the level of damp in my room, a lot of my projects smell like uh, like a church cupboard, um, real kind of girl guiding shed scent to my <laughs> quite expensive yarn and project bags. Um, you know, in a salvageable way, but in a way that makes me uh, really think about Anglicanism, um, which is not always the vibe I go for in my knitting. So uh, when I, I came home from Disneyland Paris, uh, which I, uh, I took knitting, I didn't do any knitting while I was there. Um, two main takeaways. One, went on a roller coaster by myself because I'm an absolute legend. Two, uh, met Cinderella and it looks like we've got engaged from the picture <laughs> that we took. Two, lovely women in love. But I came home and I wanted something I could just not think about, um, for which I can really recommend uh, any kind of embroidery kit where the design is printed on the fabric. Uh, this is a project I started last year, late autumn, early winter, um, when all of our kits came in for Christmas and we were testing them to see, I, I bought samples of um, some of this stuff to see if it was actually worth uh, stocking because I'm a conscientious shopkeeper and uh, uh, Charlotte and Toby grabbed pom-pom wreath kits and knocked them out. Like Charlotte did hers in a day. Toby did his over a couple of shifts. Um, and I said, now nah, I'll do a 40 centimeter square tapestry. And uh, who that didn't get finished for as a Christmas sample. And I now love tapestry so much. One stitch, you don't even have to go back. I, I love cross stitch, but you don't even have to go back on the stitch he just made to make the X. It's just all little V's, uh, not V's, ticks. Um, home. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is uh, from a cushion kit that we sell. And um, I love it. I flipping love it so much. And I have done probably half of what you can see in the last, 10 days. This bit, real boring, real boring. This is a lot of, there's there's swirls. There's um, Live Love Love font. There's Terrazzo. Um, it's in exactly the color scheme I try and use in my bedroom. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a cushion. Um, unfortunately, we sold all the cushion pads I bought for the cushion kit, so I don't have to buy more cushion. I've seen it. So I did all these little, all these little, Terrazzo guys, and then filled in and I'm doing the same. This bit is, is gray, that gray again. Yeah, and it was incredibly satisfying. And I got a lot better at catching in the ends as I, I went. I mean, that's pretty nifty looking, right? Could be, could have been hot garbage. The, on Saturday, we had people in, if they wanted to craft instead of watching the coronation. And I cannot express to you how much I got done and what I didn't consider a very intensive craft session. And then yesterday I was working on it all day and feel like I made no progress. Um, even though I did like a third of the yellow and started on the gray background. This is really useful in terms of a project to be finished because it comes in a cardboard box because it's a kit. So that is a very, firstly, all self-contained. Secondly, um, don't have to think about a single thing about it. Uh, sometimes I go, mm, how am I gonna get round this little color? 
this little mint guy to get back to the main bit of grey. That's that's fine. Um, and also, it's quite a big box, and it just it's gonna flatten, recycle, done, gone from the pile. Um, and then inevitably, it will take me six to nine months to sew. Yeah, I guess 160 centimeters in a square on a sewing machine to put the backing on it because it comes with the backing. And I reckon I've got a pillow, uh, a cushion fill upstairs that I could use from an old cushion. Um, but yeah, as soon as that tapestry gets done, it is never seeing a sewing machine to get actually finished. Unless I say I'm gonna make a YouTube video about sewing 160 centimeters, four straight lines to go around the edge of it. Um, <laughs> just to justify its existence. That means I have um, more uh, more choices to what's next. I have been so good at not casting anything on. I have put out the yarn for a cardigan I want to make. I need to buy the yarn for at least twice. And looked at it and put it back on the shelves. Because I am a saint on this earth. No one has ever shown more restraint in the uh, face of adversity than me and not casting a cardigan on. Got this jumper that I nearly brought and honestly <laughs> couldn't get out of the bag because it was in such a tangle. And I thought this is a sign by which I mean I went, nah, that's not happening today. And then I've been looking at the other ones in the big pile. And I reckon I know what my next work project is gonna be, which is actually finishing one of the other ones of these because will I give up? No. Do I teach this jumper anymore? No. Um, do we sell the yarn it's made of? No. And yet I will do the two that are still on the needles. Then I can say that I did it. And that I used my short time on this earth while, anyway. I was gonna show you some books, but I changed my mind. Uh, that is a catch up on what I have been up to, uh, mainly crafting, but also um, in terms of becoming affianced to uh, French princesses. Next time I will be doing another kind of project um, as opposed to a what I'm working on video, uh, but in an attempt to get back in the saddle, and by saddle I mean um, squeaky spinning chair, I thought I would uh, just show you what I've done. And also I just wanted to show off that I have finished a project. I have finished, I have made, like there is progress. Technically this coral one I could wear. I won't. I don't even know if I will when it has sleeves. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, do visit our website, www.slipstitchldn.co.uk and uh, we're Slipstitch LDN on various social channels. And in the meantime, I hope you're enjoying your crafting. I hope yours doesn't uh, smell like 90s damp does. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to find out what I'm gonna work on next because I don't know. <laughs> Goodbye.